and welcome to Sunday School. We're live from the Jerusalem to Jericho Road today and I'm just waiting on my co-presenter coming. Come on ahead, Benji. Oh, she's shouting that she's been attacked by robbers or something. I said I'm far too busy. I've got Sunday School to introduce. So today I've got crafts and we've got an incredibly handsome new presenter. What else we have? We have a song singing and we have a Bible story. And this week it's about one of the parables. Can you guess what parable it might be? I have no idea. Well, we'll see you later on. Hey now! Well, hello again, everybody. Hope you've all had a good week and that you're not too fed up with your homeschooling yet. You have a few more weeks and maybe months ahead, but um, hopefully everything's going okay for you. So, as I say, it's the quiz. And as usual, I've got eight questions and they're all about last week's talk. So I hope you remember back to what Mark was telling us about. It was all to do about um, the beginning, the beginning of a new year. So let's see how we go. So question one, what do we use to tell us what day it is? What do we all hang up on our walls and write, write on? What do you call that? Okay, question number two, who is in control of the future? Question number three, what does God want us to do? Now, but halfway through the story, the, the talk Mark told us about a story from the Bible and a man um, and he came to the Lord Jesus. What did he want? Question number five. He went to the Lord Jesus, but he did have a problem. What was he too fond of? What did he not want to give up? Question number six. Both Mark and Charlotte talked about jigsaws. How are our lives sometimes a bit like a jigsaw? Question number seven. How can we have purpose in our lives? Mark actually mentioned a verse in the Bible. Can any of you smart people remember what verse he mentioned? And finally, question number eight. When we trust in the Lord Jesus, we're not just to sit back and enjoy it. But, well, we, we are to sit back and enjoy our salvation, but we have a job to do. And what does God want us to do once we put our trust in him? Okay, so we'll see how you all get on again. Don't forget to send in your answers. You can either write them down and post them or you can send us a wee video of the answers. Uh, but it'd be good to, to see that you are all listening. Okay, take care. Have a good week and I'll see you all again next time. Bye. Hi folks and welcome to the start of our new series on parables. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at the Good Samaritan and learning some lessons from them. And as you complete your worksheets and follow the story, you'll be able to get a good understanding of the story of the Good Samaritan and how God wants to speak to us through it. Talk later. Bye bye. The Good Samaritan. A teacher of the law asked Jesus, Teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus replied, What is written in the law? The man answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. Also love your neighbour and love yourself. Jesus said to him, You are right. Do this and you will have eternal life. The man then asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? To answer this question, Jesus said, A man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some robbers were lying in wait. They jumped out and attacked him. They tore off his clothes and beat him. Then they left him lying there, almost dead. It happened that a Jewish priest was going down that road. 
The priest saw the injured man. What should he do? He walked by on the other side of the road. Next, a Levite came along the road. He went over and looked at the injured man. What should he do? He walked by on the other side of the road. Then a Samaritan came down the road. The Samaritans and the Jews did not normally talk to each other and worshipped at different places. The Samaritan saw the injured Jewish man and felt very sorry for him. What should he do? Well, the Samaritan went to him and poured olive oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them up. He put the injured man on his own donkey and took him to an inn. At the inn, the Samaritan took care of the Jewish man. The next day, the Samaritan brought out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. The Samaritan said, take care of this man. If you spend more money on him, I will pay it back to you when I come again. Then Jesus said, which one of these three men do you think was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by the robbers? The teacher of the law answered, the one who helped him. Jesus said to him, then go and do the same thing he did. Now it's not an interesting story. But it's really important to remember the reason for this story. Why would Jesus point the lawyer to the law instead of the gospel? Because that's what the lawyer was trusting in. He was an expert. He thought, oh, I've got this. If anyone is getting into the kingdom of God, by obeying the law, I will. So Jesus, as it were, just holds up the mirror of the law in front of him so he can see his reflection in the parable. <clears throat> the lawyer sees that he can never inherit life by obeying the law because when he really understands what the law is demanding of him, he can't do it. He can't go and do likewise. And you know what, boys and girls, and mums and dads, neither can we. But you know someone who can, the Lord Jesus. The Good Samaritan is a picture of the Great Samaritan. Jesus left his neighborhood of heaven to come to our neighborhood to have compassion for us, he gave and gave more than oil and wine. He gave his life on the cross so that his blood could heal us of our sins, so that his love could heal us of our brokenness, so that his acceptance could heal us of our distance with God. We live in such a broken world. We see it on the news, we see it in the newspapers, we listen to it on the radio. We are sinners and we also are sinned against. Our relationship with God was broken by sin, but we were created to know God and to long for a relationship with our Creator. The Bible tells us that we have eternity set in our hearts, but we know we aren't qualified to inherit eternal life. So boys and girls, that's why Jesus came. He came to save us and redeem us and adopt us as dearly loved sons and daughters of God. 
And if we are already trusting in Jesus, do you know that God loves you so much as a son and as a daughter? We can never be saved by keeping the law. Legalism will always leave us with a doubt and a fear that we aren't qualified because we can never be justified by the law because we can't obey it the way God demands that we obey it. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus, he saves us, he forgives us, he fills our account with his righteousness as if we were keeping the law perfectly because we have the righteousness of Christ. If you have never trusted in the Lord Jesus, please don't put it off. Believe in him today. Only Jesus can qualify you to enter heaven. But he is eager to give you eternal life as a gift if you will but believe and trust in him. Bye bye. So just a few wee words about the pack this week. You'll have got out last week, you'll have got out um, a Bible time lesson and there are four um, lessons in that, within that pack. Um, for the uh, older kids, the older boys and the Bible class, there's only one lesson, but if you just worry about doing the Good Samaritan one, we'll, we'll sort you out with um, some more lessons next week. But for most of the children, you'll find this Bible time lesson inside and it has four lessons within it. Today, if you could have a crack at doing the Good Samaritan lesson and take photos and send it over to us if you manage to do that, or even just read through the questions with your mummy or daddy or whoever you can find in the house, because it will help you get the story into your head. So what, I'm, what uh, basically I want to say is just try the first lesson today. Next week, we'll do the next one and the week after that. So if you look ahead, you'll know what Mark will be talking about next week. So we listen to the Good Samaritan and we, we craft with him. It's about, a Bible sticky plaster. A Bible sticky plaster. Uh, so you take off the back. And what does the verse say? Verse. Um, love each other as I have loved you. And you just stick it in, bang one in the center. The middle one means. This craft only takes like a minute. So I'm expecting to see lots next week. I think last week 
a lot of you are still recovering after Christmas and I know only a few sent in uh, the your, your 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 craft so I'm hoping that we'll get more and more points of course. And then you're going to peel the back off one of these sides and make sure it's on the right side not upside down or anything. You're going to stick it on and then you'll do that with the other side. Yes. And can you use that sticky plaster on your knee? No. No. Okay, so happy sticking. So I just have to log in to Google Plaster, I think. Is it Seesaw? Maybe it, maybe it's Zoom. Oh no, I think it's Google Meet. Yeah, tur turn your camera on. No, no, now you're on mute. On mute. Ah, uh, is that meant to explode? Oh, history is so boring. <gasps> William and Norman, uh, King Harold, uh. <sighs> the answer's five. It's, oops, sorry, I've got to go. Hello, and welcome to the Spanish Love Point Update. We think you're all still asleep for Christmas because we didn't get that much um, entries or prizes. So, we've got Lewis and Leah, Fionese, the McCrackens, and our Palmer all on one point. And then we've got Casey and Dora, the Lennoxes, and the McAmoyles all on two points. So, if they send in there, pictures or crafts or versions this week you will get a prize and Lewis and Leah and Sophie and Bobby they sent in their third one last week so they'll be getting their prizes this week okay so this has been Sunday School Points Update thank you and good night hello and welcome back for another Digging Deeper now today we've been learning about the parable of the Good Samaritan and for the digging deeper we're going to read a little bit more about another parable and the title is Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed. The verse is from Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. He said to them, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Small as a mustard seed is a phrase used by Jesus because it was familiar to the Jewish people at the time. It was common for Jesus to tell parables as a way to help people understand his message. I have, al I have always known parables to be everyday stories with spiritual meanings. The mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds that exists and when Jesus uses this symbol he is referring to an object that is small and almost unnoticeable. We are encouraged by this verse as it helps us to understand our faith. Even if our faith is only small and seems unnoticeable, the amazing fact about this parable is that if God directs or guides us in a certain way, we can have the utmost confidence in knowing that God will work and miracles will happen. For nothing is impossible to those who believe. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. This verse reminds us that the important element here is knowing in whom you have your faith, and not how big you feel your faith is. And it is through this faith that we can help others by loving and caring for them, like the Good Samaritan in today's message. We can love and care in the same way God loves and cares for us, that he would send the Lord Jesus to die on the cross for us, so that we could one day be in heaven with him, if we ask him to forgive us our sins and have faith in what he did at the cross. Thank you for listening. We'll see you again next week. Father, just thank you for bringing us into another week, Lord. I just thank you for uh, all the children watching this morning, Lord, even though we aren't able to meet up in person. Um, and Father, I just thank you for Mark's talk on the Good Samaritan and how he helped the poor man that had been uh, beat up on the side of the road on the way to Damascus. And Father, I just pray that uh, every day that we will live out uh, 
our lives like we good smart and looking out for others and trying to help them any way we can. Uh, whether that be helping our mum and dad with the chores and doing as we're told. I just pray that you'll look after us all in, in these uncertain times, Father. I just pray that you'll look after all the children and uh, keep them safe and that they'll be able to tune in next week. Amen.